Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. Welcome to part nine of how to build a tin can Stirling engine. We're going to figure the dimensions of the main chamber. Well, I promise to do this and then we're going to get on to the rest of the framework and the pistons and I'll show you a little bit on here if I can do things in time. I took a lot of notes. That means I'm not going to be wasting too much time. We're just going to be running through this and I'm not going to show you things I've already shown you before. This main chamber, three inches. Okay. Inside of the press, which means the maximum height that we can start to press is four inches and one eighth. Four and one eighth inches. Four and one eighth inches, 10.4775 centimeters. The ridges of these cans are about one eighth of an inch. Actually, three sixteenths of an inch. If you need to know that in centimeters, one eighth inch is three. Uh, 0.3175 centimeters and 3 sixteenths is 0.4765 centimeters. Now this displacer here is 2 inches or 5.08 centimeters. At 5.08 centimeters and this being 10.4775 centimeters which we'll go ahead and throw that over to 2 inches and 4 and 1 eighth inch. This would be taken up about half the distance inside. We don't want something like that because we'll be working with over two inches thick worth of air. We're not going to do that. That's more than half the height of the displacer. Not uh, good. More than two inches of air. That would make the machine very slow. Inside width of the main chamber is four and one eighth inches or 10.4775 centimeters. Divided by two for radius uh, would equal two and one sixteenth radius and 5.23875 centimeters radius. Now pi r square gives us 13.364 square inches or 86.2 centimeters area to heat the air inside. Now this is why we don't want a four inch high main chamber. We would have two inches or 5.08 uh, centimeters of air to heat. One inch or 2.54 centimeters will do just fine. 13.364 square inches of area, 86.2 uh, square centimeters, times 1 inch of air equals 13.364 cubic inches of air, or 218 cubic centimeters of air. All of this is not rocket scientist. We're here to build a fun engine. I went and saved some time. On this one over here, I made the mistake of putting a short piece on the bottom and a tall piece on top because I made the hole early. I almost did that here. It goes this way and the hole comes up this way. This way, the heat coming down here doesn't bake the glue or whatever and I've got super glue on here which is cyanoacrylate and after heated up uh, I've been told it actually puts off gases you don't want. So we're going to be using this. This is high temp RTV silicon gasket maker. Six. Uh, 26B. Wonderful. Now here, if I've got two inches here and an eighth inch ridges, then to get three inches having one inch of air, what I really need is three and one eighth inches total. So I'm going to make the top piece one inch because I want it to be the short one and the bottom one is going to be two and one eighth inches. Two and one eighth inches is 5.3975 centimeters. I wrote it on here just to be nice and easy. One inch here is 2.54 centimeters. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut this, and I'm going to press it in here, and we're going to have a second machine to play with, and then we're going to start building a couple uh, pistons and framework, possibly in this video. Okay, last time I was showing you, this is the pair that I thought was all rusted, but basically this is the good pair. Anyway, a good sharp pair, it doesn't matter if it's napkin or what it is, it'll cut it nice. It'll keep you from cutting yourself, I guess, a little bit. This last one here I did with super glue, that actually went in that deep and it bled pretty good. That's what's left of it, not too bad. Anyway, the reason why I turned the camera back on, notice none of these are two or three ridges more than two or three ridges long. That's where you cut all the way around to keep from denting the can. You get all the way down to the end and you start cutting thinner and thinner and I cut a half a ridge off half a ridge and I'm a half a ridge all the way around here from completion. That way when I do my final cut it's not warped or bent 
And that's what I really wanted to show you on the last video. And use gloves. Good. And I'm going to cut this one. I'll be right back. Okay, now this piece is actually cut. You notice I got a lot of thin ones over here. Just like this one. This is the bottom piece. Notice the arrow going up. I cut it down to half a ridge all the way around from where I need to cut. That way I can look on the inside and use the light to show my line. Now, the other way, which is easier, setting your fingers. See, I can't close it all the way. When you bring these in, you don't want these to go like this. You'll put kinks in them. These will pass each other and kink your can. You want to go just so far, so far, so far each time. Or it's going to wind up messing your cut up. Now, coming into here, you'll find a sharp part on your shears or a new pair of shears is good. Now I'm cutting on the indented side because this piece goes inside. And I'm going to do this all the way. Keeping the very tip lined up with your line each time you cut and pushing this way with this hand and this this way with this hand. This is how my hand got cut on the last one with the cheap pair. How well this cuts and how easy it, it goes depends on how close and straight the line that you cut just before it is. Notice I'm letting the can roll where the cut is. And I've got the base of these on here to help me press a little bit and keep my fingers well out of the way. And the main thing to notice is I am using gloves. This piece is proving a little bit harder. I need to turn it to my angle so I can actually get a good dimension here in my light. There we are. A little bit more. Almost there. And that's how I get that perfect straight line. Last time that slipped, I was cutting on this side and it went chunk and cut in about that deep. Not much fun. Use super glue. Ha! <laughs> Perfectly flat. Ready to press. Hello, two inch displacer. We're going to show here real quick. And this and this is three inches. That's what I want. Three and one eighth inch. This fits inside of that one. Wonderful. I'll put some goop on this. Set this inside. Put it in the press. These little coffee stirs fit on these. Uh, coat hanger pieces pretty good put a piece of super glue that way you can adjust your li uh, linkage when you're done that'll be great now I should have 16 cubic inches of air to play with when this is pressed okay I've got it in the press I've counted 24 turns on each of these and I've got my edges set in and I went ahead and spread this on and I'm going to tighten them down it's going to go pop but I'm not going to that on camera, you've seen that already.